Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who's going to be reviewing Marciology by Rock Marciano. And I've been thinking about this because I, I didn't know. Like, did my audience want me to review the new Beyonce or the new Rock Marciano more? Basically, it was a litmus test to see, like, where's my audience at? How much of my audience is underground rap fans? And it turns out the answer is 45%. Not too bad. And, you know, I have happy memories of reviewing uh, Rock Marciano. I, I reviewed The Elephant Man's Bones right around the time that my baby was born two years ago. So, like, that album is very much mixed in my head with those happy memories. So it's funny, because when, when I hear Rock Marciano, even though he's rapping about a lot of hard street stuff, uh, I mainly just, like, remember the look of joy uh, in my wife's eyes at seeing the baby for the first time, that kind of stuff. But a funny thing happened when I, when I put out that poll. Now, someone responded, and I'm not going to say their name. I'm, if, if this is you, props to you. I'm not mad at you. Thank you for commenting. Uh, but it is emblematic of, of something that I get sometimes. I will say that with my Beyonce video, I talked about how that album was a masterpiece for like an hour and 15 minutes. And I've still got like 30 people telling me that I need to stop dissing the Queen. <clears throat> I don't know what's good enough for, for Beyonce fans, uh, but I will tell you that in a similar way, I can pick up a same kind of protectiveness of Rock Marciano. So somebody, who will remain uh, uh, anonymous, said to me, Rock Marcy's music is straight up secret society rap. Arcane stuff. Stick to what you know. I'd say Beyonce is more your speed. So I... <laughs> I feel like I'm in uh, one of those animes, you know? Oh, you think that's my speed? I mean, a kung fu movie. I'll show you. Watch my review. <laughs> you know, like, you think, you, think I can't, you think I can't get arcane? Anyways, uh, I had two responses to that, okay? So my one response is the kung fu response, right? You think, I can't review this? <laughs> uh, oh, excuse me, I'm so scared of the arcane. I wet my widow pants. That was my one reaction to this, this mystery uh, poster. <laughs> but then the other part is fair. It, I get it. It's, it's a fair thing to say. It's a fair thing to say that how the hell would I get it? Especially understanding that I've only really listened to Elephant Man's Bones, understanding that all of the possible barriers that could be between a professor of French and a great under, underground uh, rap artist from New York, I understand that. That's totally fair. And to go beyond that, I mean, he is arcane. This is my, my attempt at, at, at drawing the album cover. I don't edit these videos, by the way. And I don't really have... Uh, I normally would show you the album cover on my computer, but I'm using my computer as my phone stand, okay? That's how underground this station is. This is a pretty good depiction of what the... Uh, what the album cover looks like, it's really mysterious. It's very strange. It is, dare I say, arcane. And it, it's funny because the cover especially, and a lot of the music as well, reminds me very strongly of 1970s Italian horror. So I've done minimal amount of research on Rock Marciano and his world, but is this something that everybody knows? If if you watch the movie, let's say Profondo Rosso by Dario Argento, also called Deep Red in English. If you watch the movie Deep Red and tell me it doesn't give you that same kind of cool, arcane, stylized, gritty, grimy, weird, horrific feel that martiology does, that's fine. You know, but, but in my opinion, I, I really fell apart. <laughs> that sentence fell off a cliff. I invite you to do a comparison and just see how these things go together. And this is a high compliment. I like giallo horror. That's the, the kind of horror that Argento made. And the soundtracks to those, to those uh, movies are all by this band called Goblin, which has a very rock marciano, very invisible renaissance feel to it. It feels like sometimes when I listen to Alchemist beats or rock marciano's beats, I'm just like... Do they have Rock Marciano like in another room? I mean, do they have Goblin in another room and they're just like working on this together? But the main thing that I'm missing, the, the context that I'm missing, and I'm picking it up as I go along here, but is Rock Marciano's status as the founder, as the guy, the alpha of the invisible renaissance, okay? Sorry, I just knocked over some stuff. 
uh, so if you watch other documentaries, right, other videos on YouTube, uh, Def Goldblum has a series of good videos on underground rappers. Hey, I mean, I want you to subscribe to me, but that dude only has like 15,000 subscribers and he has like a lot of good videos. Anyways, he refers to, to Rock Marciano as the godfather of underground hip hop, as the patient zero of the drumless, grimy hip hop. And it turns out that he was part of Flip Mode Squad at some point. I often talk about the first Flip Mode Squad album as being like one of the great overlooked albums of the late 90s. And he even refers to and says that it's commonly known that Rock Marciano is called the Rakim of the underground. Like there was before him and there was after him. So just by that standard, I need to give more respect. I mean, I give him plenty of respect, but I need to give him more attention than I'm currently giving him. A much smaller channel called That Dope SH Asterix T has another video just saying how great Rock Marciano is. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, it's an even smaller channel, but you know, like <laughs> there isn't that much out there on Rock Marciano. So to those who say that I, am, I, I do not understand the arcane well enough, you know, please understand. You know, there's not that many people talking about this stuff. You're stuck with me, sitting in my office, waiting for another goddamn meeting. Of all the things that one can... The funniest things <laughs> is that my introduction to Rock Marciano was an album that he didn't produce. So I can easily tell, based on this album, based on Marciology, that the thing is that he produces his own work. He is in the running and actually in the lead this year for my annual Bismarck Bismarck. That is the award that I give to the best self-produced rap album. It's a very important thing that used to happen a lot and doesn't happen very often. And when rappers self-produce, we need to really cherish it and put it on a different level because it is something different. Now the beats here, they're just all these just loops. Just where do they find them? Just where? Where? Where do they find them? Some of these songs even have like vocal quotes. I try looking up the vocal quotes. I can't find them. The, the crate is deep as hell. Just so deep, right? <laughs> like, like if we think about like, you know, crate digging in the 80s, you, know, you just sort of picture someone going through and flipping through and being like, ooh, earth, wind, and fire. I wonder if this has a drum beat on it. Then it gets a little bit more, more strange and more weird. And then now I just have this image of like, Seriously, just the top of someone's feet wiggling around and his entire body in the crate, just digging in the bottom of this endless source of music with these great synthesizers and mysterious drums and all these instrumental bits that are able to be looped and restarted. And then we get to his rap style. And I now understand why people have been telling me for so long that I have to get with Rock Marciano because his style is like my favorite style. I don't know. I don't know exactly what to call it. I consider it to be the ghost face school. I guess we could sort of just call it like word salad, <laughs> you know, like smart word salad, complex word salad. But he delivers insanely complex rhymes, delivered very smoothly. When I think about my favorite rappers, you know, ghost face, Makami, he's in that zone. But there's a kind of laid backness to it which makes him go one step further. And this was a comparison that was made in one of those videos. And uh, it's the anniversary of uh, Mad Villainy. I reviewed Mad Villainy last year. I didn't know an anniversary was coming up. And you know, this has happened to you where you come up with like a really bad joke, like a joke in really bad taste. And it pops in your head, okay? <laughs> it pops in your head and you're like, oh, what kind of sick fuck comes up with a joke like that? And then the other part of your head said, you did. Who are you talking to? This was your brain. <laughs> Let me give you an example. I remember when Princess Di perished in a car accident. I was at my friend Mark's house on Pine Street in Belmont, Massachusetts, okay? That, I remember that clear. We, I think we were just watching Saturday Night Live. We were watching something on TV and the news came up. And literally, it was this quick. Terrible news tonight from England, uh, from France, uh, Princess Diana is dead. She died last night in a car, and the f before we even get to the second sentence, I go, oh, can we call her Princess Died? Or Princess Dead? Now, I, I came up with that joke the second that, that she died, and I've been sitting on that joke, and I've never told it to anybody. 
but that's not as offensive as the next joke. So I was listening to this album, I was listening to this style, and this joke came up. And before you unsubscribe and never listen to me again, understand that I'm only telling this joke because I feel it gets a deeper truth. So it's a crass, lame joke with a deeper truth. With great hesitation and regret, I tell you the joke. This popped up in my head. Yesterday I was listening to this album. I was pushing that very same baby who was born two years ago. We, we were walking down my street. She was in, the, in her little uh, carriage, and I was listening to this album for the first time. What's the difference between MF Doom and Rock Marciano? A mask and a heartbeat. Cold. Cold. But let me explain why. Why this terrible joke that I should never have told. Why I actually decided to tell it. The mask part, I think, is clear. I mean, it's not that... It's not that they're the exact same rapper. But based on what little I know of both of their discography and based on the comparisons having been made many times. Okay, so the reason I say the mask because the mask implies sci-fi themes, the mask implies that sort of alter ego stuff. Instead of that, we have Rock Marciano who's just always on the street in his street rhymes, street stuff. Not really fun and not really easy to turn into something kind of fantastical, perhaps less commercial for that reason. And then the heartbeat. Now that's obviously cruel. It's tragic that, that MF Doom died. But the only reason that I told that joke is that like, because he died, it has given him a certain amount of respect and a sort of sainthood, which he deserves. Dude's awesome. But so does Rock Marciano. That's the thing. <laughs> it's, if, as far as I can tell, based on my research, if Rock Marciano died right after he made Marsburg. Marchburg? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> Marsburg? If he died right after he made that, it would, be, it would be like we'd say, oh, do you have the classic three? Donuts, Mad Villainy, and Marsburg? Because if these, it seems as though all around this, this period of time, this early decade of the 2000s, we have these underground classics that helped to rebirth the underground and restate the artistic value of rap music and hip-hop culture and all that stuff. But thankfully, Rock Marciano is still alive and still kicking. And it's very sad and very unfortunate that MF Doom was taken by inferior healthcare uh, in England, and it's very sad. So I apologize for the joke, but do you see why I told it anyways? Because it hints at a deeper truth that we should be appreciating Rock Marciano now. Did I do all of that just to say give him his flowers? <laughs> Did I do that? Could I have just said that? Should I scrap the whole video and restart? It's all right, MF Doom had a sense of humor. He would have made that joke, I think. Tell me in the comments. The thing that I think makes me connect beyond the skill of writing, and I'm going to talk about that in some great detail, just the way these rhymes are worked and sound unworked. I've only ever heard it with MF Doom. I've only ever heard Rock Marciano and MF Doom make that feeling. That's not to say that I like them more than Makami or Ghostface Killer. I personally like Makami and Ghostface Killer more the way they do it, but they're not at the same level of complexity or that same level of ease. And there's another YouTube video, which you probably have seen, because he has a ton of viewers, by Digging the Greats, all about how the key ingredient of Mad Villainy was Doom's indifference. And I think Rock brings that to his projects as well. Just this kind of like, I'm making this, but it doesn't really matter, but it's going to be so good, it's going to absolutely blow your mind. Okay, well, now that, now that I've given you a little bit of a taste of what this review is going to be like. Let's get, let's get, uh, let's get into the album. Uh, before I do, please smash the like bucket. Please subscribe. Uh, if you type in letters AVAA, -A -A, that stands for awesome video as always. I will always give a heart. But I'll tell you what, I'll give you a new one. <laughs> if you want to say TJAA, -A, terrible joke as always, I'll heart that too. Because <laughs> I, I seriously sat over there at my desk for like 15 minutes being like, should I tell the joke? Should I tell the joke? It's great. It's great being up in your head all the time.
So I'm going to give you my stamp, my example song of the album. It's a perfect example of why he's going to win the Bismarck Bismarck. The song is called Le Flair. Super killer, low key beat. Just this harpsichord sound and this loud bass. And he does this thing where he often like extends out the sample or slightly changes it. And here it kind of lowers throughout the first verse. And it's just such a beautiful, clean loop that just sets a perfect, it's like he's, you know, making a painting and he's painted the landscape just perfectly. And then now his words are going to come in and they're going to be the people, the strange people that populate this landscape. It's craft time. So this is the front. This is what I've been working on. Okay, trying, to, listen, I'm not a professional rhyme highlighter, okay? <laughs> Leave that up to the folks at, I don't know, Vice or Complex or who knows where, okay? This is my best attempt to try to explain what the hell is going on with this opening verse. This is what I'm talking about with him being such a great rhymer and, okay, let's just try, okay? Quit comparing him with the mad, quit comparing him with the mandem. So Mandem is Jamaican patois, or Jamaican dialect, I don't know if it's technically patois, of plural of men, because pl men, plural, uh, means homosexuals in Jamaican. So if you're talking to multiple men, you're talking about Mandem. So already, quit comparing them with the Mandem. I'm having trouble figuring out exactly which sound, so if you don't know how this works, you just highlight each of the sounds that ends up being rhymed because that helps you to understand the rhythm of the verse. But like, how is it that Perrin and man, how does he rhyme Perrin and man? But he does, it makes that sound. Quit comparing him with the mandem. This creates what's called an internal rhyme where you normally have end rhymes. I'm Barney Rubble and I'm here to say, I love Fruity Pebbles in a major way. Okay, those are end rhymes. This is an internal rhyme. It's also, a mosaic rhyme, where you take a multisyllabic word and rhyme it with multiple words. The best example of all time is escargo, my cargo. All right, <laughs> simplest version from Notorious B.I.G. He was the master of mosaic rhymes. So, parin him and dem. You see, it's multisyllabic, aaron im and dem. Now, it's all in the pronunciation. So these words shouldn't rhyme, but they rhyme when he says them, thereby creating some kind of awesome rhythm. Wearing everything on the lamb, the mannequin. So we have everything which breaks everything up, but wearing man, parent, parent, wearing, that's definitely right there. Mannequin, kin, wearing, parent, man, damn him. Did, which goes to quit and with everything from scrambling, now all of a sudden we're going to go on this just ridiculous rhyme where we get the blues and the pinks and the blues and the pinks. Mannequin scrambling. Blue, pink, blue, pink. To pimp in, all right, so now we have this, this sound, which the did, quit, with, pim, okay, this kind of like tinny short I sound gets in there. Pim, pin. Okay, we're back with the pin, quin, wherein, I guess I should have just had the, the rin there, but anyways, I'm doing my best. Blin, pandarin. But look at what he did. He flipped the blues and he, the blues and the pinks. You understand me? I'm not crazy, you're crazy. Scramble in, pandarin. Pin, wait a minute. I'm going crazy. Right, it's, it's mixed up. So it starts with parent him and then becomes mannequin. It goes pink, blue, blue, pink, blue, pink, pink, blue, pink. Latin, the hammers rinse. Banana Panamera with the tints. <laughs> oh, pack in the mac in the back of the yak. The, look at this right here. Banana Panamera with the tints. So what's great is that this whole Banana Panamera thing is ridiculous. Okay, a Panamera is a kind of Porsche car, and I suppose it's yellow, so it's a banana panorama, okay? And then he saves it all by getting too goofy, by ending it with the tints, which rhymes with the rinse and the pim and the did and the quit, which we started this whole little run on. 
So all of this all together means that we have a lot of complexity, a lot of multisyllabic rhymes, mannequin, scramble in, pander in, hammer. Because he doesn't say hammer in. A lot's going on here. And this is just one verse. And the entire album is like that. The entire album is like that. Like later he says, rappers like crabs in a barrel throwing jabs on these apps, but I don't battle rap. It's just jabs on these apps, but I don't battle rap? Saying that with a Rochester accent is terrible. I'm throwing jabs at these, on these apps, but I don't battle rap. It's just, the witch will sniff a gram off the pentagram and stick a shiv in you like a Christmas ham. Inventiveness, and that's the thing. <laughs> okay, when you watch those other videos that I talked to you about Rock Marciano, it just devolves into this. And then he said this, and then he said that, because when you listen to it, you just go, and then he said this, dance with the devil every steps of penitentiary chance, demons channeling my energy through a piece of hair. Just, he just gets, you just get all into this, just this stuff, you know? Stick your shiv at you like a Christmas ham? Like rhyming sniff with shiv and pentagram with Christmas ham? Like, I get the arcane stuff here, right? Because pentagram and witch and all this is kind of this dark, spooky, woo stuff. And then mixing it with Christmas ham. And then later, it seems like he's maybe quoting someone talking about him being like, yeah, yeah, he's a square, he's weird, he's weak in bed, he's a piece of shit, he ain't even lit. <laughs> it's just wild. This is wild, the whole thing. It's just wild and it's fun. And I want to go back and I want to quote that dude again who said that I shouldn't review this because it's too arcane, I get your point, right? I'm not really, I'm not like breaking it down for you. I'm not explaining to you what the pentagram means. I'm not explaining to you the deeper uh, meaning of the banana panorama, okay? I'm not saying how that ties into the skull and bones and George Bush Sr. when he was there, the blood sacrifice that he did that led to his invasion of Panama that then was linked in to an underground sect. We all know that story by now, and that's what Rock Marciano is really trying to describe with this album, but I'm not going to tell you because I am the holder of secrets, okay? Now, I'm going to go through the rest of the album a lot quicker. The whole album is tough because it's like this. Hey, here's a cool beat. Whoa, here's some awesome rhymes. Next track. Whoa, here's a cool beat. Hey, here's some awesome rhymes. Starting off with Marciology, the opening track. Again, self-produced, super nasty beat. Down, dang down. These cool, like, high-pitched random notes. Saying things as big as Ricky Lake. Hey, those of you who think that I am I'm not arcane enough to hang with uh, Rock Marciano, I got bad news for you. We watch the same TV shows, okay? He makes all these references to TV shows. We're about the same age. He's one year younger than me. I looked it up. So um, he makes references that you don't understand because you weren't a kid of the 80s who watched too much TV. And I, 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 listen, I imagine that a lot of my life experience could not line up with Rock Marciano at all, except for, I guess, shared love of uh, Buster Rhymes. But um, I'm pretty sure we could talk about TV for a couple hours based on this album. And he says, I done created a lane. I think this is nice. This is him sort of claiming his space, the fact that he did create this lane, if this is to be understood, if this is correct, that he really is the guy, then it's awesome that he's saying it. Weird howls. Most of the songs have like a cool outro. This one has like a different beat. It's like a ratty bass, kind of like a Spanish guitar, someone playing dice. It's almost like he's showing off, which makes sense because someone says, you are watching a demonstration next. But it's, it's, it sort of reminds me, like Alchemist has been doing this too, where he just throws on an extra beat that's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm such an ill uh, producer that I'll give you like an extra beat. I don't even do anything with it. It's just, it's for you. I don't even, this thing? You call this a beat? That's fine, I guess. Next track is called Goyard God, produced by Animos. Animos? Animos. I'm going with Animos. Very in keeping with the last song, but has a little sample in there. Just this lyric. <laughs> now the Lamborghini Urus is tangible. The steering wheel ain't never felt hands this smooth. It's crazy I don't even get manicures. The steering wheel never felt hands this smooth is a beautiful inversion. This is the kind of thing that'll drive you crazy when you study rap bars because you just want to go, oh my God, 
Most rappers rap about the wood grain. They rap about how smooth their car is. The smooth car has never felt someone as smooth as him. <laughs> you know those memes of like the guy where like his brain increasingly blows up and he turns into Vince McMahon or whatever it is? I'm getting them all mixed up. But like this is like the next level, next level, next level, next level until it's not just that you have the fancy car, but the fancy car has you. <laughs> Soviet Russia cool kind of rock singer in here, incomprehensible. Next track is Green Crossboat, insanely good, simple piano, jazz, drum loop, and just these words, in futuro, I don't know, it must be some Spanish sample, 10 toes on burning coals, the burner's closed, and can't touch me, I'm a germaphobe. So many turncoats, no wonder I've been turning cold, it's too cold to return your coat. You see this over here? This, this took me like half an hour because I was trying to figure out if comparing him really rhymes with mandem, okay? With how he pronounced mandem. I can't do this for the whole album. I'll be here all week. I've got a terrible meeting in 15 minutes. There's no room on the scrotum. You gotta keep it mobile. That's quotable. You see what I'm saying? Rock Marciano reviews. You just read his rhymes. You just read them. <laughs> you just say, there's no room on the scrotum. You got to keep it mobile. That's quotable. There's no room on the scrotum. In futuro, Spoon in the old school look like Ricky Shorter room. He's talking about Ricky Shorter's room in the TV show, Silver Spoons. That's what he's referring to. Everyone wanted that because he had a race car bed. I sleep in a race car. Do you? Cool Jamaican outro, then we get to True Love. I sort of didn't like this sample in the beginning, but then he lets it play out in the chorus. And again, this is self-produced, Bismarck, Bismarck. And it's just the way the children of the ghetto, it's really nice. And again, we watch the same TV. I saw its flaws, Phil Drummond won't let us come around his daughters. I'm a dog, I'm more like a young Calvin Broadus. <laughs> so Phil Drummond from the TV show. This is an open call. If there's anybody who would like to do a video with me about the TV show Different Strokes, I, I want, I, we just need to do something because the show is way too important for what it says about like race and class in America. And I don't feel like there's been any like snooty ass uh, commentary on it, you know? We need to do some kind of like Quentin, like deep review of the show. Bebe's Kids, funny, be very funny beat. Like he has like a weird sense of humor which I guess is another way that he reminds me of MF Doom, where it seems like how could he possibly have a sense of humor? He does. He says you don't need to call CPS. That's good. Uh, very edgy beat, kind of head nod and cool. Then we get to Bad Juju, produced by Alchemist. So, like, like usually when the Alchemist is on an album, he, like, outshines everybody, but that's really not the case here. He's not outshined, but he just fits right in. And what I like what Alchemist is doing here is that Larry June's on this track. I think Larry, I think Alchemist has like a little tiny button inside of his head that's the Larry June button. And it's like whenever he knows he's working with Larry June, it's like, all right, this has to be a foggy, smooth beat. And just, he just always, in a RZA-like way, he knows how to produce differently for different people who he produces for, not to the RZA's quality, but no, who is to the Rizzo's quality? Very few people. But he's able to do that. And so this is a very Larry June style beat. And I love the difference between Larry June's voice and Rock Marciano's kind of gravelly sound. It's very nice. Next track is Tapeworm, again by Animos. Super fun, energetic beat. This like tinny guitar, like sounds like 70s Motown, you know, not 60s Motown. Uh, basic taste buds, the medium rare steak come with blood. <laughs> you try it, it tastes good. It's true. If you don't eat rare steak, you are wasting meat. That poor animal died in vain. Oh my God. A, a well, just please work, work in your life towards learning how to enjoy rare steaks. Because I don't really like steak that much, but primarily because when I grew up, it was all just like well done and A1 sauce. And that's its own thing. I'm not saying that's bad. A1 sauce and a well done steak has its own value. I actually prefer minute steaks. Thank you very much. But... And that's the French professor in me. That's how the French eat it. The French eat meat so rare, they have another term beyond rare. It's called blue. So you can ask for a rare, and then there's one extra level. You cut into it. It's like, moo! All right. They don't sell chicken fingers, neither. Killing Spree, the next track with, uh, featuring Crime Apple. 
this weird like accented sample this is the one i couldn't find it's like and you are on monty wanting money for a spree you did something bad it made you sad and maybe you're mad i don't know where he got this crazy sample from i don't know where it's from i don't know where this accent's from uh, I just love the way the sample resets in this kind of jarring way. Flea Lord has a great verse about not being able to afford Rock Marciano's first album. And now he's like working with him because he couldn't afford the modem. Like he couldn't afford the modem to download the album. I don't know if Flea Lord's worked very well. So please tell me in the comments, what do I need to know about Flea Lord? Because this, I think, is the best guest verse on the album. Went diamond, nice kind of ride cymbal and string beat. Very, very spacey beat. Again, self-produced. Fire and reload, fly a meatloaf, high as an eagle. M man's worst enemy is his own pride and ego. Did he say meatloaf? Supplier, catch on fire like Richard Pryor. This dude and I totally watched the same TV. Man, I was terrified of, of, of cocaine. I was terrified of cocaine primarily because I, I'm from Boston. And, and the dynasty was over, but then we got the, the best draft pick and our new player, Len Bias, was going to be leading us to the promised land of greatness. And then he died of a cocaine overdose, which was racistly called a crack overdose most of my life. It wasn't crack, it was cocaine. And allegedly it was his first time trying it, which you would know if you listen to Rock Marciano, because he said you might die first time trying like Len Bias. And <laughs> remember, you know how that joke about MF Doom is too soon? There's two people whose deaths, it's always too soon for me. Len Bias, still hurts, Phil Hartman. Those two can't make a joke. Just, nope. Nope. Len Bias. Nope. Take back this first. Take back this line, Rock. I'll take back the MF Doom joke. You take this back. We watch the same TV shows. He has Robin Leach on here, who had this TV show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, which was basically like MTV Cribs. It was basically just like looking at rich people's stuff. It was basically like the announcement of everything that's going to be wrong in our whole goddamn society in a TV show that aired at weird times. And you just see people on their yachts and this dude would talk like this. The glamour and sense of outrageousness seems to be missing in this day. It would be great if it were missing, but the wealth gap is ensuring that it is. And Higher Self, another alchemist beat, very tight drum beat, the two-note violin loop. I was listening, I was like, oh, this is simple, man. Alchemist is sleep, man. Alchemist isn't working that hard at this. Alchemist, oh. <laughs> then the beat extends with this woo sound and this nice cleaner beat. He congratulated me when my baby was born, by the way. Do you know how dope that is? Being able to tell my, my daughter when she grows up, the second, the day you were born, Alchemist welcomed you into the earth. I get a lot of cool stuff out of this channel. It's going to be hard to be cooler than that. Um, crying for a piece of the pie, just want peace of mind. The simple things money can't buy. Okay, so it's kind of an anti-capitalist statement in the middle of this very sort of street level pro crack dealing and therefore pro free market capitalism view. It's interesting. Sneak disses, I heard a couple but can't respond. It's beneath me like sneaker bubbles. This is why he will drive you crazy. This is why I recorded this, this thing now and it's gonna be probably 40 minutes based on the time. But God damn it, it could be an hour and a half. Beneath me like sneaker bubbles? He's talking about the little bubbles that were in Nike Airs. I guess they might still be. They're those little bubbles. It's beneath me like sneaker bubbles. Sneak disses, I heard a couple and they like sneaker bubbles. Time I was at a wedding and this guy, for some reason, asked me if they made a Wally Wee game. And <laughs> I never get that out of my head. Like the movie Wally. Did they make a Wally Wee game? <laughs> I don't know why he asked me that. Sneak disses, I heard a couple behind me like, like sneaker bubbles. Beneath me like sneaker bubbles, Wally Wee game. Then we get to La Flair, the stamp. I don't know if he was trying to put on like his best beat right after Alchemist, if it's kind of competition there. And then on the run, this great sample, always on the run with piano. Wonderful Jay Worthy verse here. Then we get to Larry Bird. Hey, Len Bias and Larry Bird. I like to imagine Larry Bird listening to this song, thinking, okay, this song's about me. <laughs> and just being like, when are they going to talk about, <laughs> when are they going to talk about Larry Legend? This isn't about me at all, because, you know, Bird's, I guess, is some amount of cocaine. Nice resetting sample. Uh, sample, lots of cool vocalization at the end of this sample and this flute. Just There's a lot of beats like this, but they're all great. Um, 
again, just if you can imagine like 60 year old Larry Bird listening to this album, try, trying to find. Although he would like the whip a bird like Lambeer, because Bill Lambeer and, and Larry Bird got into a fight. And Larry Bird, I don't know if he won the fight, but let's pretend that he did. Knowledge says, I feel like I'm in Boston, all that white and green. That's how you score a basket for the team. Uh, and then the album ends with Flocks, F L O X X X X. And this is just the most killer style goblin sound that 70s, the Dario Argento, right? Ooh, can we do that? Hey, Jordan Peele, are you out there? I don't think that you're, I know you're into horror movies and stuff, but can we do some kind of giallo movie? Like, hood cinema giallo movies. I know there's a lot of like hood cinema uh, horror movies, but not with that kind of like psychedelic madness of giallo. I think it'd go really well with like trap music and it would go really well with this kind of underground music. Hey, that, there's another idea. I'm giving that to the world, okay? Let's put me on the DVD commentary. A beautiful sample here. Almost sketchy synthesizer, just another beautiful reminder of just how good of a rapper and how good of a producer he is. And I just, I just can't, I just cannot get enough of, <laughs> I just can't get enough of this. Now that I've like figured out what Rock Marciano is, and really understand what he is, I just have a lot of homework to do. It seems like I have to track down Marsberg. It seems like that's the, the main one that I need to track down because I saw some people saying online that like this is not his best work. And, um, Really? All right, that's pretty good to me. This is my old Patreon list. Uh, I don't have a new one, I printed, I left it at home. I know um, Vuk Ivich and um, Zane Kordic are also uh, big guys up here. Um, I also asked for, if anyone wants a shout out, but I did that like an hour ago. So Tatsu123, uh, he wanted a shout out on this video, but I didn't have enough time for everyone else. So look in the comments. And look, you know what? I'm going to hide their names secretly in the thumbnail. See if you can find it with the arcane knowledge. All right. So tell me, uh, tell me um, what you think of the album. Did I uh, describe it well? What is your favorite Rock Marciano lyric? That would be cool. Tell me that in the, in the, uh, in the comments because I'll love to read them. Okay, off to another terrible meeting. There's the camera.